All right, welcome back everybody to the On Track video cast. I'm your host, Karen Martell, and we are talking all things hormones today. And I'm really excited to introduce my guest, Dr. Patrick Flynn, also known as the Hormone Whisperer, which I love. He is the founder of The Wellness Way, as well as an international speaker and author. He's well known for his passion for women's health and his incredible ability to help women balance their hormones. Welcome, Dr. Flynn. Hey, thank you so much for having me, Karen. I appreciate being on your podcast and excited to share some, some um, good information that I believe is going to impact people's lives like crazy today. Absolutely. So whisper to my hormones, Dr. Flynn, because I, I'm sure like so many women out there, I'm in need of it. And I feel like it's, you know, in my practice, I see it every single day and all my friends, my mothers, my aunts, everybody's got some serious hormonal dysfunction going on. So mm -hmm. I'm excited for you to get started and telling us how we can start correcting these things. But to start, I would love to hear, I like your story. I've read your story a few times yes. in different places. So please tell us how you got into female health and hormones. Well, it, it starts back even earlier than that when I was actually a sick kid and I had an anaphylactic uh, reaction to an egg when I was 13 years old. And what it happened it was, so I ended up going to the hospital and they did a great job and saved my life, but it didn't answer why I was sick in the first place. So at 13 years old, you know, medication actually cut, kept me from dying, but then I realized I was still a sick individual. So I started to really research health at 13 because it, it triggered my brain because I, I was diagnosed with as a child that was um, never, you know, uh, was supposed to turn into anything. They said I was going to be in prison. I couldn't focus. I got all bad grades. And then I realized that the inflammation and all the damage caused by meat and eggs on a regular basis actually turned to anaphylactic as 13. And then when I started to realize that I had allergens, I started to actually, my brain started to become more focused and I started to actually, you know, really be able to, to, to come through a different light and my mom saw a different child come about that way and then it started to get me the research going well wait what are we missing here why was i diagnosed as a as a as a, a juvenile delinquent okay back then they would you know i'm only 43 years old but that was 30 years ago or even earlier than that they would have drugged the heck out of me and but they didn't back then so i had counseling and all some of that well they didn't realize that as they calm my brain down with the medication i actually just with the medication started to think better okay and we're just on a steroid so i didn't die okay so then all of a sudden get this so i said i gotta start figuring this stuff out researching it so what I started doing, I started to go and study health and realize that doctors are clueless. They have no <laughs> idea about health because then my health started to improve I, I, and I started to, to, to go into nutrition and then I realized that there's other doctors that do things. So I searched out a chiropractor and, and I started to get more change and then all of a sudden, guess what? I was actually going through school and, and to go through chiropractic school, going through naturopathic school. And all of a sudden, guess what happened? So then all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm, I'm really starting to realize that, listen, that medicine's thinking has really done us a disservice. Now, my example is this. I always say medicine's the fire department. If you have a fire, how it's catching on fire, it's the greatest profession to make sure you stay alive. The United States ranks second in the world, almost first, at emergency care of not dying. But they may put up the fire with axes and hoses, but at the end, you have a rotten, burnt-up house. Do you see what I'm saying? And so, yes, I'm thank God every day that medicine exists because we actually live a little bit longer because of it that way. But you're still left with a burnt house. So I'm a 13-year-old kid left with a burnt house going, how do I rebuild it? So the thinking has to be different. So then I realized as a, as a young, young man, teenager that way, and started to do that, started to put the schooling in place and realized that not one doctor had the, had the view. It was like, okay, you did this and a little bit of this. I'm like going, whoa, 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 we got to start putting this together. And that's why I have multiple degrees in my education that way. But the thinking is really what, what really started to, to, to get me to figure out my own health. So then of what, once again, I end up um, going through chiropractic school, going through, you know, my rest of my education that way. And uh, obviously my background in nutrition, things like that. And all of a sudden I'm actually, um, I'm getting ready about three months to graduate that way. And I run into this beautiful woman. Okay. <laughs> Drop dead, gorgeous, fell over head heels for her that way. Obviously, you know, it's kind of, kind of cool. And, and, and we started to date. Okay. And about two weeks into our dating life, she told me, uh, she actually came over to visit her and she was crying. And I'm like, Oh my goodness, what the heck did I do? Okay. <laughs> and I'm like, and I realized she goes, no, we need to sit talk. And I got that pit in my stomach. And I'm like, Oh, this is going to be bad. Well, the, the story she started to tell me was for example, is her health history at this time. She was just turned 23 years old. They almost, you know, they wanted to rip her uterus out. She had endometriosis and endometriosis so badly. Um, she actually, she was just, they said, listen, don't ever try to have kids. If you do, it can be devastating. You know, you, you probably won't be able to have kids anyways that way. So don't even make a, th a thought in your brain. And so I'm like, 
but that didn't make sense to me, Karen. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I have this really weird idea. And, and, and if we don't agree on this, we should quit this podcast right now. Okay. <laughs> now I'm setting you up for this, but I believe <laughs> women are genetically programmed to have babies. I, okay? I do believe that myself. Yeah. There we go. So we can continue. Okay. So I'm like, that makes no sense to me. And they say, but wait, doc, these wonderful doctors saw your wife, these highly educated PhDs, MDs, endocrinologists said, listen, that's what they're telling them. Yeah, because they're the fire department. And all they know how to do is deal with end stage condition diseases that way. And I'm thinking like a carpenter. I know how to rebuild a house. Do you follow me in that? I do. See, so medicine, medicine, like I said, they have a purpose. See, that's why I kind of get a little frustrated with natural people saying medicine, drugs are horrible. Yeah, break your arm, tell me drugs are horrible. No, treat it like a fire. If you have a bad toothache, man, shoot me up with Novocaine, man, because tooth pain hurts like a son of a gun. Do you see what I'm saying? But toothaches are preventable, okay? So I'm the person saying, listen, when they say this, I said, but wait, there's a reason why her uterus isn't normal. There's a reason why that lining is going there. So I said, let me see your stuff. And that's where it triggered. Because all of a sudden, guess what happens? I started realizing as I was going through all their labs and all their testing, I realized that their view of the human body and how medicine looks at it is so incomplete. Let me say it again. I used to say wrong when I was young in practice and a little bit more of a fireball. And so that, <laughs> believe it or not, my, my energy is actually calmed down a little bit, okay? And, and I said, medicine's got it wrong. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They didn't get it wrong because they tested some things, but let me show you this. This is Karen. I hope it's going to blow your mind away. Okay? okay. Karen, obviously your audience knows you. You're probably what? 28 years old? Oh, thank you. 42. Okay. Oh, we're, oh my goodness. We're not that different age. Yeah. Okay. I know you'd never guess, right? <laughs> but here, I want, now remember, this is the part that's still not taught in, in, in schools from medical to, to chiropractic, to naturopathic, to functional medicine. They all get this wrong. And this is why I became so popular in the whole hormonal realm this way. Imagine this, you're a 40 year old woman, you know health. I checked out some of your stuff, but here's one thing that most people miss. If you think about it this way, you know me, I'm a male, okay? What major hormone dictates who I am? Testosterone. No doubt, everybody knows that, testosterone. It's a significant hormone. Okay, now you're, you're a woman. What hormone dictates your life? Estrogen. Okay, let me see a question. Is estrogen a hormone? Yes. No, it's not. No, okay. That's the <laughs> biggest fallacy. That is the biggest lie oh, women are taught. That it's, oh, that there's many different, right? Is that what you're talking about? Like estrone, there's estradiol. But how there's... many? But how many of them? I do know this, but I'm not going to remember because I'm being put on the spot. But, but, no, but I know that all... there's a lot. There's like That's right. Your would... audience, but here's the thing, though, but I want, and here's the difference. Yeah. So I met my wife and I looked and they tested estradiol on her. Right. One so of the always, 10. Yeah. One, One of, of the, the 10. 10. Okay. And so here's what happened. So I looked at my wife going, wow, your testing is incomplete. But see, the other nine don't mean anything to them because in the fire department thinking, guess what happened? They have no care. They have no treatment. They have no things for it that way. So it's inconsequential to them. That's when the doctor says it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to you because you don't have the tools because you're full of axes and hoses, drugs and surgery. Do you follow yeah. my analogy? I and so I said, listen, whoa, whoa, whoa. Because they couldn't drug her anymore for what they want to do. And so then we had it left to do is what? An ax, surgery. But all these experts, I don't care about your experts. Your experts are mainly actually so incomplete. It should be illegal for them to give you health advice. Absolutely. Do you see what I'm saying? I do, so, yeah. So this, but imagine this, we all, if you ask the, in general women know that, you know what's really funny? Think about this, Karen. Most women don't even understand their estrogens that if it gets too high, the only known cause in the world of breast cancer is excess ones. If you have it low, guess what happens? Guess what? Cancer, depression, osteoporosis, mood changes, breast changes. You, see, it dictates your life. We're just talking just a couple hormones. We haven't gotten to progesterone or other ones that way, but just take estrogen in general. Well, here's what happens. I want you to think about this, Karen. Be honest with me. How old were you before you got all 10 of those measured? Oh, I've never, I've never had them That's tested. The point. <laughs> so how, can, how can I, as a doctor or any doctor, give you any opinion about your health, about what you do, or how you're, are you going to get cancer? Are you not going to get cancer? Do you follow me on that? So my wife's uterus was being destroyed by a 4-hydroxyesterone, mm -hmm. which, for example, most people have no clue endocrinologist, but for the audience listening right now, you have something magical. It's called this wonderful thing called a computer. And you can Google search it. Just type in 4-OH-Estrone. 
four dash OH estradiol. Guess what happens? It's basic hormone physiology. And so I come along saying, hold, it, hold the phone. The whole profession has this wrong. They have it wrong because they're incomplete. How can you assess somebody hormonally when you don't even test them? It's like doing this. Karen, you ever been to the movie before? Yep. Have you ever sat and watched a preview on TV just going, hey, honey, that looks like a pretty good movie because you saw a, a, a minor clip and you get to the movie and it sucks. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. Because why? You took a very small clip and tried to judge the whole. Do you see what I'm saying? And you were majorly disappointed because like, man, they showed the best parts of the darn movie. The rest of it sucked. Well, here's what happens. When we deal with female care everywhere across the world, I don't care if you're, you're, you have universal health care. I don't care if it's for-profit health care. I don't care if you're Mexico, British Columbia, United States, Australia. They all suck. Because you know why? And I don't care who pays for it, they still are incomplete in their evaluation of women. And that's why no matter where you go across the world, no matter who pays for it, women are barbarically being treated because they're sick as a dog. And by the time they get to their 42 years old, they're so darn unhealthy because the hormones that dictate their life weren't even measured yet. And the sad part is this, this is the kind of healthcare we have today. Thank you. And you know, every single day I get people coming in that have hormone dysfunction and their yes. first question is always, well, can I go to my MD to have my hormones checked? Not a good idea, is it? <laughs> well, remember, here's what happens. What they are really saying, Karen, is can I go to the MD and have somebody else pay for it because I don't want to pay $400 for my own hormone test yeah. because we have convinced the public in every country that these magical insurance companies have this magical thing that they're going to teach these doctors to do. And I'm like, fine, cool, go. And when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, I will be here to do what's right for you. Yeah. And, you know, looking, just hearing your wife's story, I remember being put on birth control pill at 14 for my endometriosis, yep. which, you know, I gained 20 pounds in a year. Yep. I was sick. I was like, I was growing endometriomas that I had to get yep. surgically removed. Yes. Do you think anybody looked at my 10 estrogen, you know, lines of estradiol and all of whatever else was in, is in there? Yep. Never, not once. And I've only so, ever had my estradiol checked, which is always in normal range. So I'm guessing right. it's one of the other ones that you're talking about. And, and that's the point. And so what happened is, so when they looked at my wife and said, your hormone, well, I came my girlfriend at the time and some of that, because here's what happens. I, because you know, my wife's story is kind of funny. And that's why my hormone seminar that I've been teaching all over the world has been getting very popular because I tell the story, say, listen, my wife looked at me and said, I know you want to have a big family. I know you do. So maybe we should break up. And so I'd make a choice. Do I figure this out? Or do I, actually, do I actually leave this woman? Well, I, it's kind of funny. So I believe God put her in my path to say, listen, no, no, no. I'm the kind of guy that's strong enough to say, listen, you've got it wrong. And this is what we're going to do. And we're going to figure this out. And we did. And then I just did a simple test. I called lab companies and said, can you test this? I said, absolutely. It wasn't done. It's still not done today. And I've been preaching the same thing for 20 years. It's just that clinically what happens when everybody wants to go be a big speaker. Yes, I speak a lot because my message is very unique. But the idea is this, is, is, is the fact that I'm still a practitioner. I sat with women all day yesterday and talked about boobs and vaginas all day long. Do you see what I'm saying? And yes. I'm a 43 year old male. What is wrong with that, Karen? Do you see what I'm saying? And women are like, I never knew that about my boobs. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Trust me. They're not that complicated. Women are not complicated. They're just misunderstood because they don't understand how their hormones are. Yeah. And it's a growing epidemic. People think that, oh, well, I'm not in perimenopause. I can't have hormone dysfunction yet. And it's, we're seeing it at a younger and younger age. And so yep. tell me a little bit in your, in your practice, what are you yep. seeing? Is there something that's kind of general that you're seeing a lot of right now? Yeah, I will tell you right now, here's what happens. And we're going to talk about this because I want to, I want to uh, use a term that you use. Here's once again, there is no such thing as perimenopause. It's a made up term. Do you see what I'm saying? You only have uh, actually three cycles of life as you as a woman. You actually have non-cyclic, then you cycle for a certain amount of years, and you have menopause. Perimenopause is a made-up word that women are becoming so hormonally bad before they have menopause that they had to create a word. Not a joke. It's not a diagnostic term. It's not. It's a made-up word to please women because doctors have no idea what they're doing. Look into it. It'll surprise you. Okay? Okay. Now, here's what happens. This is where, once again, you probably will never have me back on your show after this one, okay? I'm always going to have you back. <laughs> that's right. This is, how, this is how feminists hate me, okay? And let me explain. Everywhere I speak, some woman gets up and walks out because here's what happens. The number one thing, the number one thing that destroys women's health by far, by none, not even close, is mental stress. Yeah. 
mental stress. Okay. Now you say, doc, how is that possible? Well, let's look at basic biochemistry that you can look up in a book. Okay. If you look when the major hormones that actually even regulate and actually control those estrogens and make them not get out of control is what hormone, Karen, you know, it is oh, the cortisol for stress. Oh, cortisol, that, that's the result of the most of it, but the progesterone comes from, Okay. Oh, okay. Yep. Balances the estrogens, not the stress. Okay. So progesterone is actually the counterbalance. If you look at a female cycle, you see estrogen cycle up and down and you see progesterones do it that way. Uh, and progesterones kind of actually do what? It counteracts some of the, the effects so estrogen doesn't get out of control. Okay, do you follow me? Yeah. Now here's where you said it right. Progesterone is not an end stage hormone like your estrogens are. Once your estrogens are produced, they have to be their user or eliminated. And if they're not eliminated properly, guess what happens? They keep on doing their job, which can result in breast cancers and other diseases that way. But here's what happens. Progesterone is not an end-stage hormone. It converts into cortisol. Let me say that again. It converts into cortisol. That means, ladies, right now, if you're mentally stressed out, your body says, I have to survive. I have to survive the stressful event. So I'm going to convert that progesterone into cortisol. And now there's less progesterone in the body. And therefore, estrogens now can actually go crazy even if they're at normal levels. So you as a young lady could add normal estradiol, normal estrone, normal estriol that way, and the other seven that way, and go look at all my estrogens are normal, but your progesterone is low, so it doesn't counteract the effects of even normal levels that way because your cortisol is taking it away from it that way. So mental stress depletes massive female hormones. Now, here's what happens. Yep. You say, Doc, well, why do feminists get uh, mad about that? Because ladies, if you do not control your mental stress, guess what happens? It will cause you to be ma majorly sick. I'm not saying women are strong, but here's where they get upset. If you look at a hormone chart, testosterone is not connected to cortisol. It's why your husband can stress all day, break his finger, have horrible day at work, and still want to have sex at night. So true. <laughs> but guess what? My own analogy is this, is that, heck, a woman stresses out, basically the panties are super glued to him. Okay, because progesterone is a very, very sexual based hormone for a woman and of mental stress there. So guys don't even realize this. So I started preaching this and all of a sudden pastors started calling me up and go, holy crap, this is a marriage seminar. I'm not joking. So next thing you know, pastors are calling me to speak at their church about going, hey, this is how God made women. This is how God made men. We're very different. And that's where this whole concept in men and women are the same is so ludicrous. It's actually horrible for women's health. Do you see what I'm saying? Now here's the part. So here, this is not a joke. Let's say a man and a woman, husband and wife, okay? Both wonderful people. They have something tragic happen in their life. Guess what? I'm not even saying the woman can't even handle it better mentally than their man. But guess whose body's gonna shut down first? Ah, Hers. Female, yes. Hers. Yeah. And see, that's what I'm saying. So Are you, are you there, me, yeah. No, okay. Now I do. Yeah. <laughs> what, was last, what was the last thing you heard? Just so I want to go back to it. Um, start with when something tragic happens. Like, okay. The, the difference. Yes. Let's do it. There's a major difference. Now let's do this. Okay. So I got a question for you. Who stresses out more, men or women? Women. Okay. <laughs> Who causes women the most stress? What causes women the most stress? Well, I'm not going to say a man. Man. Is that what, <laughs> yes. No. no. You think I'm joking? If you poll most women, start asking your audience. If you have comments down below, you watch. Most women stress more about their man than anything else in their life. Do you see what I'm saying? And it's really funny. So I go around preaching going, guys, listen, you think it's it. Because why? Because estrogens are a very connective hormone. It makes you think of everything. Guess what? Testosterone is a very linear hormone. It makes us think about one thing. That's why when we go off to work, guess what happens? We forget all about women. We do. It's the nature of how we're created. And people say, Doc, I don't like that. Good. How are we doing for marriages? How are we doing for that? Do you see what I'm saying? I see what and you're so saying. I'm, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sitting there going and see what people try to do. I'm like, good. You can fight the basic biology of how a man and woman's created. How are we doing out there? Cancer, heart disease, diabetes, every hormone condition is all time high. Marriages, all time high. Divorce. Because why? We don't understand each other. So that's why my book came out. Actually, it, no joke. I had no intention to write a book. A publisher thought I it, it sat my seminar and said, we should write a book. I'm like, really? I'm like, I've been practicing this for 20 years, doing this. I have offices all over the country. 
um, and stuff of that. We have, we have over 50 offices across the United States and growing. And we're actually going international now. And so it's kind of cool. And, and what that came from, though, was the results that medicine and stuff wasn't getting. And I came with a very simple message of how the body works, how it's created, how things work that way. And guess what happens? It started to make sense. But then I could test for it properly. I could actually also do what? I could actually show the results that nobody else was getting. And that's why, for example, the hormone connection has become a very popular seminar because I tell the story of me and Christy, my wife, and how we have now four beautiful girls, okay? And then what happens is in, I built my whole actually career. And remember, we have hundreds uh, and hundreds, hundreds of docs and stuff. And they built it basically, for example, just giving people to understand how the body works and how to take care of it. And guess what? Where women really killed mainly by mental stress, men's hormones, the testosterone, will convert to estrogens by sugar. So yeah. sugar destroys men's life, stress destroys women's life. Yes, and I, and I appreciate you saying that because, you know, I'm a feminist, and so I don't take anything of what you say of, of offensively. You didn't walk I, out. I didn't walk out, but I, because I agree. I think that we have fought so long for equality between man and woman that women have kind of shot themselves in the foot because what I see in my practice is women that are still – you know, the main caregivers, they're just still maintaining the home, usually more than the man does because it comes more naturally to them. So they're, yeah. you know, with their kids, with the home, with the cooking. And now they're doing a job five days a week, nine to five on top of it all. And they never take time for themselves. My husband, you know, no problem. See you later. I'm going to go golfing for four hours. I would just be like, oh my God, that's too much time yeah. to myself. Women right. are martyrs and we have to stop because it is destroying our health for sure. Well, and, 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 and then here's what happens. And this is where, for example, I differ in where people don't realize a man is meant to take that stress on because a man can, testosterone is a very, you know, focused hormone. Do you see what I'm saying? And here, think about this way. You know, this testosterone, what does testosterone do to a guy? It gives him a huge sex drive. Well, guess what? Guys aren't pigs, aren't disgusting, aren't perverts. What happens is what? They're men. The sad part is you have people go, well, look at these Harvey Weinstein's. No, those are disgusting human beings. Yeah. That's not a real man. Yeah. Do you see him, Sam? Because your husband has, think about this. Here's what happens. And his testosterone, once he hits puberty, it stays the same all the time. So women come to me and complain and go, doc, my husband wants sex every night. <laughs> well, guess what? Either get divorced or stay single. Do you see what I'm saying? Or just understand how testosterone works. I'm not saying have sex every night. No, a woman should never do that because I can tell you the best times for a woman to have sex. But the idea is this. But if, see, but if man doesn't understand a woman's physiology, he thinks, well, I got a sex drive. You should be just like me. No, no. it doesn't work that way. There's certain no. times I'll tell you right now, you should never yeah. touch a woman because yeah. you can actually hurt her body. Do you see my, what I'm saying? Hus my husband always says that was the best thing I ever taught him was when is the best time to come get sex? <laughs> yes. And on top of it, for example, I always give the example. I say, you know, um, unlike a guy, see, testosterone is very stimulated by sight. It really is. So, for example, all you have to do for your husband is show up and he's good. See what I'm saying? Because <laughs> why? Testosterone is very – it's an aggressive hormone. So, man, I would tell people, I said, ladies, all you have to stop doing is stop dressing like the Taliban every day before you go to bed and your husband's testosterone is going to go up, okay? But Because women are all – covered up like crazy. I'm like, guys, it's so easy. Now, women don't, women don't work that way. Do you say I'm, I always tell, I always use the analogy of this with women. It's very different. Okay. Estrogens, for example, are very connecting hormones. You know what I'm saying? You don't need to connect with a guy to actually get them stimulated, but you need to connect with a woman. And the one thing about this connecting takes time. Connecting takes, for example, turning on all the rooms of the house before you enter the man cave. Okay. <laughs> and so it's like, because why that's how the hormones work. And yeah. then the thing is, understand a woman's cycle. Now, you know this in great detail. But I guarantee yeah. no one's ever explained it to you like this. A woman's hormones, unlike a male, a male hits puberty, it's supposed to be, it's, it's straight across the rest of her life until they die, okay? That's why when women think, well, guys are pigs. No, no, no. Their sex drive every day is there. And I always tell people, if your man doesn't have a sex drive every day, he's either sick or chasing another woman. That's biology. That's basic biology. But that's not a woman. Let me give you, show you an example of a woman. A woman ha does this. A woman's hormones legally, they, what they do is they change actually four times in a month. Do you see what I'm saying? Let me give you a real life example, and you've experienced this as a woman. And even your listeners, if they're women, ladies, you know this. Your breast size changes through the months. Okay, what happens? Estrogen and progesterone fluctuate through the month. 
But here's the big thing that really started to, to people when I started speaking about this because they're missing this. Hormones affect us physically. We see all this all the time. But they also affect us mentally. Guys, think about this. Hormones change four times in a month when it comes to a woman. That means when you say I do to a woman, you really marry four different women. <laughs> do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. Fair enough. You really yep. do. Yeah, and I agree. The reason, why, uh, the reason why a lot of women are on antidepressants is not because they're sick. It's because they don't understand that their emotions have to go up and down every single week. And if they did not, they would be sick. So when they want their emotions straight across, unless you're a male, that cannot happen. Do you see what I'm saying? And this is the fallacy. And this is, so women are being barbarically saying, you should have a sex drive like a man. The only time a woman can ever have a sex drive a man is when they suffer from PCOS or testosterone is so yeah. level high. But we know this, PCOS always leads to cancer. So great, have a sex drive all the time. You're gonna have a cancer, congratulations. Right, yes. And so when our hormones start to, we won't call it perimenopause, when they do start taking a dive, and for some women, this can be as early as 35, I've seen in my practice where things start to get a little bit haywire. I mean, for sure, it can even happen younger, but typically. So at that point, where in your practice, what are you doing to help these women? Can you give us a few little pointers? Let's, all, let's always go back to this. Okay, let's go okay. more in detail of causal factors that throw off hormones. Okay. Okay. Now, it's not a joke. Okay, think about this. Um, you know, when hormones change, it's not because you really lack a lot of stuff. Okay. And what I mean by this, we don't, we don't, uh, you know, we don't have low hormones because we lack HRT in our body. See what I'm saying? Yeah. We don't lack hormones yeah. because we lack drugs. But on the flip side, let me make it a little crazy. We don't have, we don't lack hormones because we lack herbs in our body easier either. Okay. See, cause all the natural people are like, yeah, look at, no, no, no. And trust me. I'm a, I know herbs like the back of my hand, but let's go here. Okay. So therefore here's what happens is when you look at the whole basic physiology of a woman, okay, if you know this, and you know this quite well, I guarantee you've tested this, um, cortisol is actually an adrenal hormone, okay? The adrenals produce one-third of the female hormones while they're cyclic. They produce about 60% when they're actually metapausal, okay? So stress really affects a woman hugely when they're cyclic, but really, really when they're metapausal because their ovaries by nature, I, I hear this all the time, it's so ridiculous. Your ovaries do not quit when you're in menopause. They just produce a lot less because you don't need to have any fertility issues that way, okay? So, that, so here's what happens. So when you look at what drains female hormones, there's three major things. Anything that's cortisol related, so mental stress, but cortisol also converts to our cortisone. So inflammatory things, toxic things, do you see what I'm saying? Chronic inflammation, drains hormones like crazy. That's why, once again, we all know this, there's every practitioner will agree upon this one major thing, that the major cause of all of this is what? Some result of some inflammation. Mental stress can cause inflammation. Trauma, it, remember, if you smash your finger, Karen, you reduce your hormone count. You know why? You need the hormones to reduce that inflammation, and so your hormone system kicks in. But hormones are always a secondary response. So there's no such thing as balancing female or male hormones. It's saying, listen, Take the massive stress off the body. Your body knows what's doing, but you're so fatigued out that when you take something medically or even naturally, it feels better because you're never even addressing the stressors in the first part. Do you follow me on that? Yeah. See, so that's why when I started to really look at going, whoa, 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 let's look at what stresses the female body out. Trauma, toxins. Well, doc, everything is okay in moderation. I've defined that. I think that's one of the stupidest sayings on the planet. Any nutrition person that says people actually can eat things in moderation, I just want to punch them in the face because they're liars, okay? Well, let me think about this. You know this as a practitioner. Your body knows, is it good for you? Is it sufficiency or is it toxicity? Does it cause inflammation or is it a nutrient? Your body doesn't know moderation. Moderation is an emotional justification to want to eat something wrong. Do you follow me? That's why I defined it. It's just an emotions because here's what happens. Let's picture a stressed out woman. <laughs> Doc, my husband's driving me nuts. It's just, I'm, I had a rough day. The kids are driving me nuts. I just crave an organic salad. <laughs> no. Gonna no. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you actually crave the highest serotonin based food in the world, which is what? Carbohydrates. Chocolate. No, chocolate. chocolate. Oh, okay. Ladies, let me tell you something. You've never heard this from a doctor's mouth. You cannot have normal hormones unless you have real organic chocolate, period. Hershey's kisses don't count, guys. That's a toxin. That's a poison. Do you follow me in that? 
See, so this idea of moderation makes no sense. See, and one thing is this, and, and when, we, when, a, when a woman's body is stressed, what happens is this, they actually run towards the most emotional thing that both men and women do, food, food. food. Food is the biggest stress reliever on the planet. It's the biggest drug we use. Why? And you say, Doc, organic food. Well, if you eat too many calories, I don't care how organic you eat. And I yeah. don't like unorganic food. I hate toxic stuff. I don't have a toxic thing in my body. I just built a new house. I don't, I didn't, even, I used, I use all non-toxic things. I have the best air, fr air filtrations, water filtration systems, everything on the planet that way. I hate toxins. Do you see what I'm saying? But the idea is this, you've got to remove those toxins, you've got to remove those things. And that's why your body doesn't understand moderation. It says, is it good? Or is it inflammatory? That's it. Do you hear what I'm saying? So I know when the people say, well, doc, that's tough. Sure. Why do you think, for example, practitioners and hormone things are at an all-time high? Because you have medicine, their fire department viewpoint says, we'll wait till you fall apart. We'll wait till you fall apart. Do you see what I'm saying? We'll wait till your house is on fire. We got drugs and surgery, axes and hoses to put it out. It's why surgeries, it's why medications are at an all-time high because the thinking is what? The fire department thinking. I'm teaching you all about tonight about coming from a different way of thinking from a carpenter's perspective. Say, listen, I understand fires happen. Sometimes they're uncontrollable, but here's what happens. But I also know how to build a house, how it works, and how to take care of it. Do you see what I'm saying? But see, the one thing is this. One aspect of that care takes no effort from a person. And insurance is based on the fire department care. Our side says, listen, you got to take care of yourself. It's going to cost you money in your pocket. Well, I don't want to do that. Then good. Be sick. So women come up to me that don't take care of themselves and say, doc, I have breast cancer. I say, shake your hand. I say, congratulations. You earned it from your stubbornness. <laughs> from I don't your stress. For yeah. 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 Seriously. I don't for people that don't take care of themselves, shame on you for trying to portray your illness on somebody else. Do you see what I'm yeah. saying? It's in, but we don't do that. Oh doc, but no, but my grandma had breast cancer and my mom had breast cancer and I had breast cancer. Yeah. Grandma didn't pass you down bad genes. Grandma passed you down bad habits and you made the same stupid mistakes they did. And you triggered the, the gene, for example, because you know why your sister that didn't tr trigger the gene is doing just fine. We're not genetically programmed for disease. It's one of the biggest lies that medicine has ever taught. Here, let me see a question. Simple question there, Karen. Are you genetically programmed for normal or abnormal GI function? Oh yeah. No, I don't believe in that either. <laughs> are you, are you, are you, yeah, exactly. Are you programmed for normal lung function, or abnormal lung function, normal heart function, normal blood pressure, normal blood temperature? Yes. So this whole idea is genetically programmed for disease is a way of medicine say that you're a faulty machine and we have your magic pill and your magic stuff. It's not your fault. Ladies, if you're sick, it's your fault. Guys, if you're sick, it's your fault. You may not like that message because it puts you in control. I don't want some, you know, PhD guy that only has drugs and surgery to be in control of my body. Do you follow me in that? Women shouldn't either. You think I'm joking? How we doing? Stats for illness are at all time high. You can disagree with me, not you. I'm saying listeners can disagree with me. That's why I never cared what people say. Because you can disagree with me and you can still be sick. You can disagree yeah. with me and say, it's not stress. Good. How you doing? You're, you're sick as can be. You say I'm? Yeah. So, and I, I you know, and, and I agree a hundred percent because I get, you know, the women going from diet to diet to diet thinking that's going to be the answer to their, all their problems, which of course it helps. But if you're stressed out, just try not to eat sugar and salt, yeah. right? We're well, wired we for it. We have this fallacy because all the keto and paleo morons, okay, that are just like, got to eat keto. Okay, good, you'll be sick. Got to eat paleo, good, you'll be sick, okay? Because guess what happens? Keto and paleo, especially paleo, I die. Do you know why? I have an anaphylactic response to egg. If you haven't had your foods tested, I can show you where a woman's hormones were destroyed by an avocado. But we, here's our model. We don't cast, we test. But we don't test like the fire department for fires. We test for function to see how it's working and what's good for your body. Yeah. See, that happens. People say, Doc, you helped my, my, my friend with endometriosis, um, and I want to do what she did. That makes no sense. I got to test you and figure out what your body needs and what's stressing your body out and how to get your body back to normal that way. Everybody's care is different. So these people running from diets to diets, I can show you guys where people, carrots have destroyed people's life. Lettuce. Yes. All yes. yes. You yeah. Yeah. But you don't get tested. You don't know. Now we talk about hormones. You got to test the stressors. And you know this. You can test mental stress. You can do a four sample cortisol test through blood or urine or saliva. And guess what happens? You can say, listen, you're stressed out, you're stressed out, your adrenals are fatigued, all stuff like that. It's like, they're so easy to test for. But once again, it doesn't show pathology. It doesn't show fire. So people are not looking for that because they don't know. That's why, that's why people say, Doc, 
you know, you do a lot of, you know, you do a lot of speaking, a lot of podcasts. Yes, because I'm sick of women, especially of not knowing because their healthcare is barbaric, no matter what country, no matter what country I speak in, I don't care who pays for it. I don't care if universal healthcare, I don't care if Bernie Sanders wants everybody to pay for everything in the United States that way. It'll just be just as sick as women as there are if, if, if government pays for it or if health insurance pays for it because the thinking is still the same. But they'll have no problem buying a brand new car, a brand new $400 pair of leather boots in a heartbeat, but they right. won't have their hormones checked. I see that all the time. Because when they get sick and they're crying, I'm not crying for them. I'm like, you earned it. It says spend that money on something that's important to you. You did this. Enjoy your boots. Do you say I'm? As they said, because you why? It's, it's, I'm, I, I'm not that kind of doc that's like going to feel sympathy for you. Why would I take responsibility for your bad behavior? Do you see what I'm saying? And say you're being empathetic and sympathetic. Yeah, and how's it led you? Do you understand? How are we doing for a country? When I look at a woman and say, listen, well, I don't want to pay for my own care. You know, I dealt with that a long time ago before, you know, got really popular what we're doing that way. And I'm like, and they're on. And I tell people, listen, services are not cheap. Do you understand? A $400 test. Yeah, guess what? Do you understand? It's a, you know, a test is expensive. Good. Yell at the lab. Don't yell at me. You understand? It's like, but guess what? They got to make money too. Otherwise you couldn't even have a test. So I'm not, I don't fall into that, that aspect of that way. I, I really don't because you know why? Because you know, you know what built my career? Just like I built my wife. I have people that fly from all over the world, okay? Now, I haven't taken new patients in well over three years, okay? Um, because once again, I have hundreds of doctors. We have doctors here in my office because I'm in my big studio right now because my show actually does extremely well across the world. Actually, Nancy, because as you guys know, I'm in the studio. I have my team over there. Um, our second biggest audience is in what, Norway? Oh, wow. Sweden. Sweden is kind of funny. So the United States, obviously, we dominate there. But in Sweden, we have four we have people because we get to track our stats that way. And it doesn't matter where I go. It doesn't matter where I speak. There's one universal thing. It doesn't matter what religion you are. It doesn't matter if you're in the West Coast. It doesn't matter if you're Democrat, Republican. It doesn't matter if you're UK. It doesn't matter if Australia. Not healthcare is not done properly. So there's sick women everywhere. There's sick guys, too. It's just that guys take less care of themselves. Guys, you pretty much have to have a limb falling off if they want to do anything for their health. You know what I'm saying? And it's like uh, that's where they finally do something. But women... Because hormones affect them so much psychologically, it's a big reason why you see women make those changes that way. Because like I always tell people, I thank God every day, and I mean this sincerely, I thank God every day I'm not a woman. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Understanding the human body, I understand the woman's physiology, I would never want to go with it they do through even in a day. Talk about a month. You know what I'm saying? I thank God, thank you all. We so, do. We have, we have a tough time and I feel like it's only getting tougher on us. So if someone's coming to see you then, and the answer is to lower stress. Is there like, do you do bioidentical hormones or I mean, should everyone just lower their stress and their hormones are going to be totally fine? Well, put it this way, the more stressors you remove, the less doctoring you need. Let me say that again. The more stressors you remove, the less doctor needs. I'm the kind of doctor that doesn't want to see you. I don't. Yeah. But also yeah. too, but here's what happens. Because of the mental stress, because of bad relationships, because of kids, because of work, because of all this stuff like this, and women are doing this. Ladies, let me say something. I don't know, because you're in the UK, correct, Karen? No, I'm in Canada. No, I'm in Canada. Oh, Canada. Oh, my goodness. I, I could have made fun of Trudeau, whatever it is. Oh, whatever. come on. Oh, because you have such a good president. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's not about president. It's like, that because that, uh, he's... Wrapping up his healthcare system, I'm going, oh my goodness. Mm. And you know, not politics, just I, I, I view their thing on healthcare. And so it's kind of funny. It's like, uh, but here's what happens. You know, when you, look at, when you look at women in general, well, here, look at this. What happens is women here in the United States do this a lot. They have to have their kids in three sports per, per month. And they're running like crazy and this and this and this going. And they're running themselves to death. And if, they, if they're not the soccer mom, they're, they're acting like they're a bad mom. You, you guess what? If your kids are not playing three sports in a month, you're not a bad mom. Actually, you're called normal. Yeah, you're probably good, mom. Probably good mom. Yeah, exactly. It's like, stop living through your children because something, because your neighbors and stuff that way. I'm like, uh, dude, I'm like, I have four girls. And guess what? My kids don't get to do three sports. No way. Why? I didn't have kids just to run around in sports. I didn't have kids to be away from my wife. My wife go one direction and we go another that way. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's like, and that's why I kind of, kind of laugh about it going, you know, everybody's so big into putting so busy that what they do, and that's why, if you ever think this way, it's why fast food became so important to people. They got so busy that food went from quality to speed. It did. Quality to speed. Do you see what I'm saying? Well, because I hear excuses all the time. Well, Johnny has baseball. Okay, did you bring an apple? Yeah. 
No, I stopped at McDonald's. Okay, cool. Uh, then I'm going to compensate for your stupidity of eating that bad stuff that's inflammatory. Yes, I have things to give you that way. And I'll continue to give those things. And I'll make a ton of money off it that way. And I'm going to be a very rich man because you are doing bad stuff. And that's why I talk to patients. Why am I going to be like, oh, it's okay? No, it's not. Stop saying it's okay for people's emotions. Do you see what I'm saying? Because you know why? Once again, Canada, even though they have universal health care, stats still suck. You guys are just as sick as actually the United States is. The yeah. United States sucks in health care. So is Canada. So that's why I kind of giggled. I said, talk about your president that way. I'm like going, he's propping up how good their universal health care is. Your universal health care sucks. You're just as sick as everybody else is. But if we're talking about, if we were talking about Australia, Sweden, all those, I don't care how you rank your health. What you're ranking in is how long you live. But guess what? We live with a bunch of rotten houses. That's why there's so much medicine used today that way. And I understand people are suffering. So they go to the drug because it's all they knew. Do you Sam? So just because you keep people alive longer, heck, there's people that lived to 80, but they really died at 55. You say them? They were just surviving on their drugs. See, so that's why I said I don't really care about – I just kind of gig when countries talk about their healthcare system that way. You say them? It's kind of funny. Yes, I do. So to go back, do you use things like bioidentical hormones or anything like that in your oh, practice or if someone was coming to so, see one of your practitioners? Let me, let me, make, let me make a very strong statement and, and because the whole bioidentical thing has become overblown. Yes, okay? I know. Yeah. Let me explain. No. Yeah. Let me explain. If you have had a hysterectomy, if you've had an organ removed, you may, you will, you will, you have no choice. You will have to have a bioidentical the rest of your life. You will. I wish they would tell women before they did that, that they would have to have bioidentical the rest of their life because it would make women search out a little bit more. So let me say, I'm, I don't care if you listen to this podcast, buy the book, do anything you want to do that way. Guess what happens? And you say, well, doc, I have my ovaries removed and Dr. Flynn's going to have some magic lotion and potion that's going to make. Now, listen, they should have told you before removing that. Guess what happens? You're going to have to take some the rest of your life. You have no choice. You removed an organ that is, has to produce some the rest of your life. On the flip side, because women are so low in hormone and they don't know how to get back to normal, they're compensating with them at HRT, Canada, Australia. Australia is actually ranked one of the top in health, but I still kind of giggle. They still have high cancer rates and high heart disease rates, really high. But what happens is this. They go, most countries have stopped giving HRT, hormone replacement therapy, synthetic hormones that come from horse urine. Do you see what I'm saying? And here, ladies, let me ask you a question. Here's what happens. The majority of hormone therapy comes from horses. I still have not seen a woman that resembles a horse yet. Do you see what I'm saying? So I kind of, you know, maybe you crave carrots or something like that, but I still don't see the connection. Okay. And I'm trying to, trying to be stupid on this one because here's what happens. So you say, well, doc, it's plant-based. Oh, you got to remember, it's still a compensation for something you lost and never even identified what actually drained it in the first place. Your organs know what they to do. Yes, you can fatigue them and wear them out. But guess what? You can actually build them back up and start to restore them, okay? Yes, herbs, yes, certain nutrients can do that. But if you're on a ton of herbs for a long period of time, you still haven't addressed your stressors that are draining them. Do you see what I'm saying? That's the big part. So I'm, I can tell you right now, progesterone's low. Good, take some chase tree. It will help, help overnight. You'll actually even feel a little bit better. The idea is, but why is the progesterone being drained? Because mm -hmm. you're just gonna be on chase tree forever, and you're never going to deal with your stressors. And on top of it, some days are more stressful than others. So sometimes some of the traits you're taking isn't even close to enough. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I kind of giggle with this. Let's say a person had their thyroid removed. I have no problem. You're going to have to take something the rest of your life. Please don't do synth synthetic synthroid or levothyroxine. Go to nature thyroid arm or something that's more of a bioidentical porcelain pig clay. Yeah. But here's what happens. Yeah. Do you really think your thyroid needs the same every day? So you put somebody on 125 milligrams per day, every day? Really? You're telling me that the body is the same every day? Do you see what I'm saying? Heck, we live in the, in, the, in the cold. I'm in Green Bay. I'm not that far from Canada. Guess what happens? Your winter months are more demand on your thyroid than your summer months. So your 125 milligrams might have become close. But doctors don't think that way. Here's your script. Here's this, this. Everything's the same. I'm telling you guys, the more you understand this, you'll sit there and go, what the hell? I've basically been lied to. Yes, you have. You have, ladies. We got to stop the insanity. That's why I yeah. do podcasts like this. I will yeah. speak to anybody because if they could just hear this, people will wrestle with my information because it's actually what? Different than they ever heard. But the idea is this. They'll wrestle with it because it's challenging their current level of thinking. 
but I'll, they'll come back and go, but it makes too much damn sense. You understand? And then you put into clinical practice and women's life change. You understand? I wish the wellness way, I wish my book already is, we, we haven't even started the sale yet. You know, we got pre-sales going on right now and selling like hotcakes. I wish my wellness ways and my books and everything were doing so well because I'm so darn good looking. Oh. <laughs> I would do Okay. No, it's because the message resonates yeah. with every person across yeah. the country. If you are a woman, even if you're a guy, because I teach people about guys vastly, it will resonate with you because I'm teaching you basic biology of how the body works. That's why when I speak on medical stages, guys, I speak on more medical stages than I ever do natural stages. I got to speak at some of the biggest medical conferences in the world. Do you know what I'm saying? And they love this information. You know what some of the doctor's biggest questions are? How do we get insurance to pay for it? I want to jump down and strangle the MDs. I want to punch them right in the face. That's what you're concerned about? People are sick and dying and you're worried about who's going to pay for it? Right. Well, that'd be the day the doctor would be like, I'm going to prescribe you meditation for your hormone health. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. not going to happen. Yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of sad. So like I said, it's just uh, it's, it's, it really, and all I really care about, I think you understand this, all I care about is give people good information so they know. And when you actually test a woman and they can see their stress hormones are off, guess what? It doesn't mean that they're going to change their stress overnight. But when no. women are conscious of it, they're more conscious of taking care of it. But when they have no clue that their husband, that their kid, that their job and everything is destroying their health, it's, it's, it leaves women going, am I going crazy? I have women literally come and go, doc, am I going crazy? No, you're normal. Oh, yeah. You're normal. Yeah. It's just that yeah. you just don't understand. You understand yeah. your body. Most women, 42, 32, 20, have no clue about how their body works. And here I'm a 43 year old man run all over the country saying, this is how everything works. And like, this is how everything works. Yeah. I know how it works. I have a secret. I have a magic okay. secret. For you. I'm okay. not a woman. Okay. <laughs> not a woman. Do you understand? I identify yeah. with a man. I'm a strong yeah. man. Do you understand? And it's like, but you know what happens? Being a strong man. I also understand that the, one of the major things that will make my wife and daughter sick is stress. That's why me as a man, takes on the stress and protects my household so my wife doesn't end up sick and my kids don't end up sick. Yeah. I actually had my client this morning, which she's transgender and she's telling me that, you know, she gives herself a shot every week. And I, I honestly thought in my head, God, why did you want to become a woman? <laughs> Like you yeah. poor thing that that's what you were driven to feel. You know what I mean? Like having to shoot herself full of estrogen every week. And I was like, Oh, she probably, you know, like she has no idea just how complicated this is. <laughs> may, may, I make a, may I make a comment on that? So I've dealt with a lot of transgender women. I've never had a transgender guy in 20 years of practice. I've never had it. Okay. And actually none of my other clinics have ever had a transgender guy. Every, and I can tell you right now, and I will give you a, a perfect stat because I track my stats that way. Every woman, every woman that has ever came in and actually had that, and, and trust me, and I sat down and talked to them toe to toe. They're like, doc, I am a guy. I'm like, okay, all right. And you say, I'm not gonna argue with them. Let's get tested that way. They dominated in male hormones. And when we started to get back things to normal, guess what happened? They started to realize that they're not a guy, that they're a woman. One of the wow. major reasons why you're gonna see and so what happens is this. So I have extreme sympathy for a person that goes through that because people say they're making it up. No, I've sat toe to toe with these wonderful ladies and they really felt that they were, that they really felt that they were actually guys. And I didn't argue with them. And so like, uh, because once again, because their physiology, even tested, even at a high level of testosterone, wasn't even one tenth of a guy's testosterone. So I don't care what they thought they were. I don't care what they wanted to be. Their hormones could never be it without artificially changing it that way, which for example, I'm very scared because when you artificially or bioidentically change something above its normal level, you're going to give them cancer and they're going to die early. Yeah. I worry about that too, for sure. Yeah. I do. It's not physiology. You know this high hormones cause cancer. So any doctor that would give a woman testosterone at a high level should be shot. That is disgusting. And you're going to give them cancer and they're going to go, Oh my goodness. I can't believe I get cancer. Really? You've been taking synthetic or even natural bioidentical hormones, putting you in levels that your body genetically, your body genetically would never let you do. Do you see what I'm saying? And it's yeah. going to make you sick. And a doctor in any politics or any government that would allow and say that's okay is disgusting. Yeah. And I can prove that scientifically. I've dealt mm -hmm. with it clinically. It's really sad. Yeah. And they're wrong. People say, Doc, but they really believe it. I don't agree. I sat with them. 
I sat and women, they said, doc, I'm a guy. Okay, cool. I'm not going to argue with you. You say, I'm not going to. I'm, why, why am I, I'm not here to change your mind. I'm here to get you healthy. Do you say I'm? And so that's yeah. why I said, so, and I said, watch that in practice. Watch what happens. Yeah, no, I agree. And I love your message. I think that it's not, I, not being talked about enough. Women do want that quick pill, the cream, the whatever that's going to fix their hormones. And I'm constantly yep. trying to say, if you don't fix your stress, it's not going to happen. And so I love that you're so straight up about it. There's no fluff. It's just like, here you go, ladies. This is what you have to do. And it, these are the things that does, yes. I always tell people. It's not what sells. Like people, women don't want to hear, nor do a man, but we don't want to hear that we have to change our lifestyle, that we have to really take an inward look at what's going on in our life. Stress is addicting. We are addicted to the go, go, go right now. So to get quiet and to get, and to, just to slow down can be really challenging at first and can feel quite wrong. Because I've, I've gone through at times in my life where I've been super stressed out and then I'm like, okay, I got to start, you know, calming down here a little bit and how uncomfortable it is just to even just sit still for a minute. And that's when I know, okay, I'm way far down the stress pathway and I've got to reel myself back because it's an addiction that go, go, go. It is. And, and the one thing that's, that's interesting about the whole process that way, and, and once you know it though, see you as a practitioner, know. Do you saying? So you know that, listen, if I don't change this, I'm going to get sick and stuff like that. So you set yourself in that pattern to succeed health-wise. And that's all you're trying to do. This podcast alone is doing what? It's actually going to give them, if you care so much, I commend you. You care so much. So we're sitting here at you know, 4.30 or uh, 5 o'clock and, and bringing information to people that way. And you're putting your time, taking away your family, giving stuff that way. Because once again, that's your heart. of the, Listen, ladies, just want to give you good information. Now, here's one thing that's kind of funny. I will tell you this, though. I am very excited about what I do every day, but guess what happens? When you challenge people's thinking, I get, I get two to one hate mail every day compared to praise mail. <laughs> I do. My laundry list of hate mail and death threats is huge. It is. Oh my you gosh. Yeah. Kind of but it really, don't think of it this way. To you, this resonates because you understand the female body. Yeah. So like, well, this is kind of basic. And I, and I stimulate some thoughts, stuff that maybe that you never heard before that way or put that way. But I guarantee some of your listeners are going to go, that jerk. He's, he's, he's a misogynist. He's like, no, I'm not. This is how the body works. Your husband, I want him to chase you around with puppy with tongue hanging out every single day. He's not a pig. He's a healthy boy. Do you understand? Know and it's like, that's not, it's not being masculine. That's like, okay. And if you don't like that about a guy, stay single. Do you understand? Know and guys, if you don't want a woman to be emotional, one of the most disgusting things you say to a woman is stop being emotional. Really? Stop yeah. being what God created the body, how to work. That's disgusting. Don't say that to a woman that way. It's, it's just, but see, that's what happens. We, it's really funny. We almost want, we almost want the opposite sex to be like us once we marry him. We look yes. at a man and go, you got, you got, he completes me. He's my other half. Then you marry him and you're beating him down because he's not like you. Yeah. Do you say that? Like, no, it's not how it works. We're different. You know, it's really funny because people don't realize we both have massive different qualities. Love them. Do you say I can never give birth, but my beautiful bride has. And guess what happens? And I appreciate her for that. I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful for it. She gave me four beautiful kids. I can never do that. You know what I'm saying? But there's things I can do she can't do. You know what I'm saying? There's vice versa. There's things, there's, it's just the way how it works. They like said, equality as far as rights and treating people with decency is imperative. But to think that we're equal physically and mentally, mm -hmm. you're lying to yourself. I don't care if the government says you have to say this. Guess what happens? That's why I hate that. It's like, no, 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 no. No, you're, you're working against how even the body's made. It makes no sense. Yeah. And so what is your book all about? Let's talk about the hormone connection. Well, it basically starts with the story of my beautiful bride and how we met. And I see it's a really quick story and shows, for example, that today now, because of that, we have four kids and I had to make a choice. And like I said, in the book starts to set the premise down of getting people to think differently and then how to test people. Let me tell you this, guys, there's not one talk about how to take care of a person. Do you know why? Karen, if I test your hormones, guess what happens? They're going to be different than, let's say, let's say, Karen, I apologize. Do you have any children? Yes. Two. What do you have? I have a boy and a girl. Girl, boy? Yep. Okay. How old's your girl? 11. How's your daughter? Okay. She'll be cyclic in, in let's say, five years old. Okay. Here's what happens. But when I would test her, even though she's genetically very similar to you, her hormones are going to be very different. How do you take care of her? How do you take care of her? It's all about testing. So it really gives women how to guide and men how to understand their own physiology from this perspective, from the carpenter perspective on how to take care of it, build it, 
take and make sure it maintains properly that way and then how to test it that's what the whole thing is about i tell people when i speak i have nothing to sell you i'm not going to say here take this magic herb for 1999 because it's going to cure all your diseases that's what all the speakers do they always have something to sell you what can they sell you you're telling me that i have i have uh, two women there my beautiful bride just sitting back there right now and guess what happens this Really, do you think that this magic herb, regardless if it's good or not, is going to apply and work to say everybody the same? No. No. Do you see what I'm saying? And so what they do is, and just because a woman takes it and has something positive happen to it that way, it's not going to be long standing. I always tell people, when people give a testimony about a product, I'm like, talk to me a year from now and let's see how you're doing. Do you see what I'm saying? So the book sells nothing. It just gives a different way of thinking. It says, get tested. And here's how you get tested. You don't need a doctor. You do not need a doctor. You can get tested all by yourself. Do you saying? Lab companies and labs are, are across the world easy to get. Do you saying? But then what happens is this. When you see the things bad, then guess what? You need a good practitioner to actually help you get and figure out what's going on. So, yep, that's what the book is about. The book was never my idea. Because well, I've been doing the same thing for 20 years. Why didn't I do it 10, 15 years ago? They didn't care. It wasn't like people say, Doc, it's selling like crazy. I'm like, cool. Do you saying? My objective is not to be a speaker, is not to be this. It's actually to inspire women to think differently, to inspire men to think differently so we can have a healthier country, a healthier world, better marriages, understanding this and stop this, this aspect of how men and women think about each other. Awesome. And you can find practitioners for the wellness way all over your country, can't you? Can, do a lot of them do Skyping and it can be um, from yeah, anywhere? But, but think about this. Think about this. But even if you start here, always start somewhere. Okay. Let's say, mm-hmm. let's say you're a single mom. And once again, and you can't get your hormones tested and things like that. What I want you to do is this, start looking at things that actually cause stress to your body. So let's do this dietary. Mm-hmm. No person on the planet, every gluten or uh, gluten, dairy or soy, unless it's fermented, but th- those things right there, start there, remove those stressors from your body. Now drum, get tested. Get tested because so you say, Doc, well, wait, what if you eat an organic egg? Well, good, I'll be organically dead. Do you see what I'm saying? It's because you got to test to see what you're allergic to that way. But here's what happens I want you to imagine this, but you can start somewhere very cheap and easy. And no joke, ladies, simply start shutting your body down at nine o'clock. When women tell me that they're night owls, I'll say, You're going to be very sick. Your biology does not do that way. Your hormones cycle very high in the morning, they drop down at night. If you're doing everything at nighttime, Guess what happens? You're causing illness. Start shutting your body down about nine o'clock because your body starts to rebuild hormone reserves between 9 p.m. and 1 a.m. That's why if you go to bed at 10 o'clock and sleep till six and go to bed at midnight and sleep till eight, you feel a lot better when you get to bed at 10, even though you got the same amount of sleep. Do you see what I'm saying? It's how the biochemistry and how your body is created. See, that's the thing. Why don't we look at how the body is created instead of trying to manipulate it, inhibit it, cut it out, drug it, change it. Do you see what I'm saying? Start somewhere. Start pulling those stressors away. And ladies, you can dramatically. You know something? Ladies, I'm going to give you the cheapest thing that you can do that will change your health overnight. This is a magic bullet. I will tell you right now. Look at me right now, ladies. Okay? I know you're watching me. Okay? All of you. Pay attention to this. If you learn this one thing, it will dramatically change your life. It's being able to say no. No. Ladies, yep. say this with me right now. Come on, ladies. I want you to do this with me. I do this all the time. Ladies, say this with me. No. No. Come on. I can't hear you. I say Thank no. You. No problem. <laughs> well, it's wonderful. But, but, but see, the advantage you have is you knew better already because you yeah. knew what it did to your body already, Karen. See, you knew better. The reason why you have these podcasts and the reason why you're so passionate about it that yeah. way, I love your stuff on the internet. What happens is you know better. You say, so it's easy for you to say no. Most women right now listening, guess what? Don't understand that. Ladies, no. Um, uh, uh, um, Dad, I want to play soccer. Or mom, I want to play soccer. No. Mom, I want to go to my friend's house, you know, seven nights a week. No. You know, uh, husband, I, I want to have sex every single night. No. <laughs> Do you saying? <laughs> Ladies, I want to eat that uh, Oreo cookies. No. Do you know what I'm saying? No will change a woman's life. Co- how yeah. much does that cost you? <laughs> Nothing. But I hope I gave you some things to start with. Absolutely. Second thing, get tested. Get tested. Do you, do you always suggest the urine, like the Dutch testing, or do you go saliva, serum? One thing that I will do, and here's what happens. Here, as you look at those 10 estrogens, if you did mm-hmm. urine or just blood, no test covers all of them. 
You have to do blood and urine together. I will, Nancy will send you a link. Remember, a Dutch test, you can, you, you can get it online, go right from the company, it's simple, you don't do it. I will give you the blood work. I have Canadian patients. You can go into any lab and get it done. Do you understand? Know it's I will, we will give you a link to. I actually wrote the most Great. complete blood work ever done in history. I will give it to all you guys for free. Get the blood test done. Get the urine test done. I, there, I, you just re, you just reduced a, a visit with a doc by hundreds of dollars. Do you understand? Know yeah. Get Great. tested. Yeah. I will give. I'll it put to that you. in the show in the show links for sure. Yes. Well, see, and actually, I listed my book. Remember, as I said, I have no care about. I don't care if my book ever sells a copy. You know why? <laughs> I tell people. I don't need your money. I am. I've no, but you guys should listen. care because <laughs> the more money you make, well, no, the more people you can help. But I'm an anti salesperson. Yes, yeah, so am I. <laughs> I want people to understand that one for, for your, to change your life. And yes, yeah. my book sets it out a little bit more systematically than a podcast or things like that. And it's references. They can see it. I list labs, I list things like that to do that way. It gives you more like a workbook to actually tar- start taking first change of thinking and taking steps. Do you know what I'm saying? So I said, that's why the book is so important. It's the only reason why I was put together. I didn't put it together so I could actually do podcasts and speak and go on TV shows and things like that. No, no, no. That's the benefit of it that way. I didn't realize, do you understand? I've been doing the same thing. You, you put in a book form, they think you're smarter. I haven't changed anything. <laughs> even book I'm like, it's the same thing for 20 years. Okay. You follow me? Yes, so, I do. Yep. I do. I get asked daily, when are you going to write a book? And I'm like, really? Do I have to write a book? Is this the steps that people have to take? But apparently so, right? <laughs> yeah. They think you're smart. They yeah, really do. It's like, oh, I'm like, I'm like, uh, no, it's just uh, put it where I used to say it. And I put it into a written. And guys, I never even read the book. I've never even paged through it. Do you understand? Know they just followed me around and actually and, and came to my seminar. It's basically a, a, a portion of my seminar put into the thing that way. My seminar goes in great detail too and stuff, but I have yeah. there's little different things. I also got more stuff in there. So yeah, it's a good thing. And so where can people find you when they want more? You've got a podcast, you've got a great website. Yeah. My, right like there. I said, Facebook, YouTube. You can You're just everywhere. Type in Dr. Petulant, but here's that. Yeah, it is because, um, and we get so much uh, publicity because I give information so differently. So what happens is if you even go to Dr. Patrick Flynn, drpatrickflynn.com, or just even type in the wellness way. We are mm-hmm. hugely searched out all across the world. And I put out, I put out so much live stuff. And here's the cool thing is this. I'm so proud of this, Karen. Watch every one of my videos. Watch every one of my podcasts. I've never sold a thing ever in my life. It's constant free information and in guiding you. And I give stuff more away free than ever. I'm so sick of emails coming across the newsletter saying, 35% off this magic supplement, they'll change your life. It drives me nuts. Do you understand? Know it's like, no. No, my message is simple. It's just that what happens, I like to educate like crazy. I, like I said, I made all my money actually helping patients. I made all my money having clinics all over the country that way. I made all my money. I don't need to sell anything. I, it wouldn't even make any sense. It's against what I believe because no two persons the same. An egg could kill me, but be a nutrient for you. So how yeah. can I say, I got an organic egg farm. Here, buy our eggs and we'll ship them to Canada. Well, if you were allergic to them, I just poisoned you. I caused you to be sick. Great. Yeah. You say I'm? So that's why, for example, I'm very proud of just free information. Free information. Yep. Like I said, awesome. it's the best. Thank you so much. I don't know if you should be called the hormone whisperer. You're not much. You should be the hormone yeller oh. or something. Okay. Well, no, get this. Here's what happened. I didn't give myself that name. In one week, three women that came in for fertility problems said, I need to see his hormone whisper. I'm like, kind of like that. And so about 10 years, I adapted You were far from like, whispering. Hey, yeah, I don't know how to whisper. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I want, I, it should be hormone shout from the rooftops. Yes, so. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. I appreciate awesome. all, all your information. I love your message. So thanks for being on the show.